Hi everyone, welcome back to Cody's Lab. So today I'm going to be making sodium hydroxide using salt, the regular eating kind. But first we got to dissolve it into water to make a highly concentrated solution. As you can see, I'm doing that here. Once I have the concentrated solution of sodium chloride, I'm going to add that to a jar with about a pound of mercury. What I have made here is a chloroalkali mercury cell. As you can see, I've got a copper wire which goes all the way down and a carbon rod which goes into the solution. Go ahead and hook up the positive to the carbon rod and the negative to the copper wire, which is going into the mercury. As you can see, I'm already producing gas at the carbon rod, which uh, contains uh, oxygen and chlorine. And the mercury is beginning to bubble as well. This is producing hydrogen and sodium, which is being dissolved into the mercury. Uh, there's a little bit too much salt here, but that should dissolve in once it reaches a higher temperature. Now, like I said, this is producing chlorine gas. So along with being in a well-ventilated area, I thought I might as well do something with the chlorine that is being produced. So I'm going to go ahead and bubble it through a solution of sodium bromide. Chlorine is more reactive than bromine, so it replaces the bromine and the sodium bromide to form sodium chloride. And the bromine, which is now in the elemental state, is able to dissolve into the solution, coloring it yellow, which will eventually turn to a reddish brown, as you can see here about half an hour later. Now this has been going for a little while, let's go ahead and check this out and see what it's done. So I'll go ahead and unhook the electricity here. Once I get it open, you can see the electrodes have fared fairly well, considering the highly corrosive environment. Now I'm going to pour off the remainder of the salt water and rinse it with fresh water a few times. Now that I've gotten rid of all the salt, I can go ahead and let it sit with a little bit of fresh water on top of the mercury. The sodium, which is dissolved in the mercury, will now react with the water, forming sodium hydroxide and hydrogen gas that you can see bubbling out here. This is actually what you would call activated mercury, a material that was sometimes used by gold panners to collect dirty gold particles using mercury. The sodium instantly reacts with anything that's coating the gold, cleaning the gold, so that the mercury can immediately gobble it up. It's actually pretty cool, don't you think? Now that I've let the water sit on top of the mercury for some time, you can see it's mostly reacted, and I should have a solution of sodium hydroxide. So let's go ahead and pull some of this out and add it to a jar and see what we can do with it. How about I add some aluminum foil? If I do indeed have sodium hydroxide in solution, it should react with aluminum, forming sodium luminate and hydrogen gas. And sure enough, you can see the solution begins reacting with aluminum, forming hydrogen gas at a faster and faster rate until it completely destroys the aluminum and dissolves it away. Now let's go back to the bromine, and I'll show you what happens when I pour the sodium hydroxide solution into the bromine solution. As you can see, I kind of messed up and poured in mercury, but that shouldn't change much. But the sodium hydroxide will react with the bromine, uh, forming sodium bromide again, which is, of course, clear. So there you have it. Hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. 